Hello and welcome to this fabulous episode of the AI Show. Mm. Holiday edition. By the way, I got a new pop filter. So I can say my P's and my B's without blowing out your speaker. I'm so excited to be here. I am a huge fan of AI. I'm a huge fan of everyone who gets to come to these. And I get to be with you. Where is everybody coming from, by the way? Let's get those things going in the chat. Happy Friday, indeed. We got this. Man, I, this is the positivity. It's just lifting my Friday. For many people, at least here in North America, they're coming on the two weeks of slowing down and doing some stuff with family and friends, etc. Uh, but I'd love to know where everyone is coming from. I'm super excited that everyone is here. Uh, let's see. I'm looking here at the chat. Where, where's everybody coming from? So, all right. Here, we have someone that is going to be giving us some really good commentary today. The most dangerous. Hold on, I'll, I'll put some. Here we'll, The most dangerous prototype hybrid to make alliance of all races, stars, universe. I don't even know what the next comment is on that. I, I don't know how you can follow up with that. Uh, Paris, France. Bienvenue. Bienvenue, mon ami. Je suis quelqu'un qui peut parler français, mais seulement petit peu. I'm trying to, you know, um, one of the greatest uh, Christmas uh, holiday movies ever, Home Alone. They went to France, but they did not stay. Very upsetting. Uh, NYC, NG, NG. NYC in the house. Delightful. I used to live in New York. Wonderful place. Wonderful place. Midland, Texas. Welcome. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. You know, I was actually, I'm actually from West Philadelphia, born and raised there. I used to spend a lot of time on the playground. You know, chilling out, maxing, relaxing, playing some b-ball outside of the school. There was one day though, when uh, there's a couple of guys who were literally up to no good. Started making trouble in my neighborhood. And I, I one fight, my mom was like, I'm done. I had to move with my uncle and my aunt in Bel Air. True story. Welcome from India. When I used to travel, the last kind of trips I went on was, was to India, Bengaluru and Mumbai. What a lovely place. I'm not even kidding. Amazing. Amazing. Vancouver. Nicest people ever. Um, another person. <laughs> Did anyone believe my story? <laughs> well, Wes, I, I was in the I was in the airport one time, and um, I was in Philadelphia, and I was talking to my coworker, and I did the story, and everyone just looked at us because I did it really loud. You know, you probably can tell I'm pretty loud, and they were like, they were like, oh, this guy from West got in a fight, and then they're like, oh, this guy, am I right? This guy, okay. <laughs> All righty, time to, time to talk about what we're doing today. Kapawi. Pandemic purchase. Pandemic. Pandemic. Pandemic purchase here. Hello, sir. What would you like to buy today? I'd like to get a Wacom tablet. Are you sure this isn't something you're buying because of a pandemic? It isn't. It's just... I feel like I need a walk. Does your wife know you're buying this? She does not. That's not important. All right, number one today. We have some guest hosts today. Some of the coolest dudes I have met uh, are going to be taking us through some awesome tech. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it. We have... Uh, <laughs> I'm so dumb. Oh, man, I pushed the wrong thing. Oh, no. Pandemic purchase. Stop, stop failing me. Uh, we, we have Rob and Albert. 
are going to take us through no code, low code solutions to uh, uh, to doing AI with Ashish. Uh, and I'm pretty excited because, uh, like I said, it's I think AI is accessible to everybody if we only if we, you know, I think I think AI is our future. Treat them well and let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty. Okay, number two. Uh, after uh, we uh, I, we talked to Robin uh, and Albert for a little bit, uh, we'll we'll look at the show that, that we've recorded, and then Ashish has been gracious enough to stop by and to actually, you know, answer questions and show stuff. We we may be able to show you more stuff. I don't know what's going to happen. We have technical difficulties. We can all just laugh at each other, and don't tell my boss. So number two, uh, we'll uh, we'll hang out. We'll hang out. Uh, we'll hang out with uh, with these good folks, and then whenever we're done there, we're gonna go back to some work. I actually have to get some. I have to make a demo. Uh, I have to make a demo for some folks, and it was due this week. So instead of Rochambeau, I'm thinking uh, we're gonna try to do some uh, um, auto ML, automate automated machine learning, machine. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna see if we can't. Auto ML, so our way out of uh, making a demo. And to do that, we're going to have to make some data. And that's what we're doing. All right. I'm so excited everybody's here. All of you youths, youths. Um, I may do a best of show uh, as well. I forgot about that. So if there's some episodes that you really like or you want me to wax poetic about something and then play it, uh, in two weeks, let me know. All right, without further or ado, without further ado, let's uh, get Rob up here and uh, Albert. Uh, here is here is Albert, my good friend. What's up, my dudes? What's going hey. on, Seth? How's it going? It's so good to have you, my friends. It's a pleasure uh, to we be met, how, how, long, how long has it been since we met? I don't even. We met at some thing thing. And then we're uh, like, we need to have you all come on do some show. Where did we meet? He met after yeah. eating some delicious food. See, 100%. It that's all it takes. It's all it takes, yeah. it's all yeah. it takes with me. Like, if there is some delicious food and you are there, we are right. friends. friends. Bonding over oh. food is the best type of bonding possible. So that was definitely Absolutely. one of those experiences. Is. That, that is about, correct. So tell us about yourselves, my friends. I'm going to boost your audio. Go. Of course, uh, we'll sure. So, you, I, uh, Rob, yeah. So, how's it going, everybody? My name is Rob Nunez. So, I am a product marketer on Power Platform, uh, and I focus around AI builders. So, super excited to be here and uh, be able to talk about this amazing no-code AI solution um, and really get a chance to highlight what it looks like and how we're looking to break down those barriers of AI. Right? Like AI could seem like a very complex and uh, daunting thing to do, but AI builder definitely. Definitely changes that viewpoint, and I'm super excited for Ashish to be able to show you what AI Builder is capable of. So, dude, yeah, exciting. exciting. Albert. Oh, well, hi, everybody. Super excited to be on the uh, AI show. So, hopefully, this is the first of many different appearances. But I am a content program manager over at Xbox. And while a lot of my work does um, go around social media, uh, gaming, of course, uh, and uh, building content, AI is always not too far behind. So uh, a lot of the, the stuff I do has AI in the uh, under undertone of things. So very happy to be here and uh, looking forward to a really good show. Mm, all right. Just a couple more people are, are popping in. Argentina, you know. Welcome, World Argentina. Cup World Sunday. Cup, yes. Yeah, uh, gotta, it's Argentina versus France. 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 I don't know. I'm 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 gonna have to go with Ar my my boys in Argentina. Man, how messy. He's a bad man. Oh man, he is <laughs> bad man with jamma. He's a goat, man. He's one of the goats. Um, and so we have him. Uh, we have some of Argentina, and then Mozambique. Hello, my friend. Uh, I've only welcome, been to welcome. one, and, and Africa is a huge, huge country. I've been in Morocco, which is like a completely different place. Than it was when I went to uh, Kenya, which was a wonderful, wonderful place. So, like I said, I've been to a lot of places. I have found that people are just excited about tech. So, how about this? How about we roll the thing that we did, and then uh, I'll let you two take it on after that. Does that work? Sounds, Sounds like a plan. Let's do it. 
Let's do it. You're not You're going to want to miss this episode of the AI, AI show where Rob, Rob Albert, Albert, and Ashish, Ashish take you through, take you through a no-code, low-code solution for AI called AI Builder. Make sure you tune in. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to this episode of the AI show where myself and Albert are co-hosting. I know you guys are used to seeing Seth on the show, but we've taken over today for an incredible episode with our good friend Ashish here. So we're going to be opening up a world of low to no code AI solutions with AI Builder. Um, so I'll pass it over to Albert to introduce himself and we'll get into this amazing, amazing demo. Thank you for that, Rob, and great intro. Hi, I'm Albert Denkwa. I am a content program manager over in the land of Xbox, but data and AI is everywhere. And which is why that has brought me and Rob uh, both to the AI show. And hopefully this will be the first of uh, a number of appearances from uh, both he and I, but enough chatting. Let's, let's get down to what we're really here for today. Awesome. Ashish, we'll leave it to you. Hello, everyone. I'm super excited to be here. My name is Ashish Bhatia, manager in the AI Builder team. And today we're going to talk a little bit about low-code AI and how we make the entire world of low-code and no-code uh, available in AI uh, and, and have people kind of play around and democratize AI for everyone. All right, let's, let's see it. All right. Let's go over to the next slide. So... Software development in today's macroeconomic situation is uh, almost everybody's job. Uh, Gartner says by 70, by 2025, 70% of new software development will happen in low code and no code. A lot of pro developers are also starting to leverage the low code platform to do uh, accelerated go to market with, uh, of their solutions. So this thing is taking off and we're seeing a lot of traction, uh, especially with intelligent application and intelligent workflows. Absolutely amazing. And I love to see this, Ashish. I mean, thinking about AI and, and, and especially coming from a world of uh, a non-developer background, being able to see how low codes has accelerated and how AI has accelerated in that space is absolutely amazing. And I'd love to continue to, to learn more about how AI Builder fits into that equation. So, Absolutely. And I come from uh, Visual Basic days. I used to uh -huh. use Visual Basic in school. Uh, the draggy droppy interface was super interesting for me. And that has uh -huh. come a long way when we've seen Power Platform. So let's go over to uh, next slide and talk a little bit about Power Platform, the low code platform. So this is the landscape of low code, no code AI in Microsoft, right? Uh, on the top, you will see uh, Power BI, which is the business analytics tool. Uh, Power Apps, you could do application development in that. With Power Pages, you can do website development. Power Automate can be used for workflow automation. And uh, with Power Virtual Agents, you could develop uh, intelligent chatbots. Powering all of this uh, low-code, no-code kind of tools is an underlining layer of data management, which is Dataverse. There's a low-code programming language, which is PowerFX. And then uh, Power, uh, AI Builder powers the low-code uh, AI for all of Power Platform. Oh, wow. That's quite the offering there, uh, Ashish. Actually, I do have a question. Uh, I do see uh, the AI builder there within the, um, the power platform. I am wondering though, does AI builder weave into all of these different um, apps and platforms here? Or was it something that's only like in a few of them? I'm definitely yeah. interested to see and see and learn more about this. So uh, most of the power tools are built on that common fabric. Uh, and slowly we are kind of uh, bringing AI to all of these tools. But we started off with Power Apps and Power Automate. Uh, some of the new tools like Power Pages is a new entrant into this local uh, development world. So gradually you will see AI uh, proliferate into those uh, power tools as well. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So. My question is, Shish, and real quick, before we even hop into any of the demo content here is, can we just really quickly explain like how AI Builder fits within the Azure ecosystem? And when does it make sense to be using AI Builder versus using Azure Machine Learning or Azure uh, services in general? Absolutely, great question, Rob. My next slide talks about that. 
So this is Microsoft AI stack. Uh, at the bottom, you will see Microsoft uh, ML platform or Azure ML platform, uh, as uh, yeah. commonly known as. So this platform is for pro data scientists. Um, they have full control over their model architecture, uh, their training jobs, uh, where they want to deploy the model. Uh, they have all the dials to kind of tweak the models, right? So you can develop uh, custom models uh, for your workloads and your uh, solutions. Um, the pro data scientists are in control here. They can peak performance. So this is for serious business. And the next layer is a uh, cognitive services layer or Azure AI services. It adds cognitive dimensions to the underlying ML platform. So vision, speech, language, decision, you see stuff like that. Um, this layer comes with uh, pre-built and customizable models. Uh, but you're still working with code in this layer, right? So it still avail, uh, appeals to pro developers and sometimes data scientists also use that. Uh, but um, again, it'll, it's still serious uh, coding business, right? When you come to the top layer, that's the AI builder layer, the no code worker layer. And you'll see the, the goodness of the underlining layer bubble up. It's a confluence of all the underlying goodness into that top layer. Um, you, you still get a lot of pre-built models, uh, but you can also fine tune some of the models. Uh, and then this layer is deeply integrated, as we talked in the previous slide, into the power platform. So you could get faster uh, time to market. It also comes with model governance because, uh, to be honest, admins want to control which models go to production, who builds the model, and who has access to AI. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. I love the way this is broken down to really kind of define where these areas sit and to, to what individual personas they, they cater to. So I want to pause here and just get to see this in action she's i would love to see ai builder in action and get to see some of the scenarios so i would love to hop into that yeah so let's go over and uh, see some demos what we're trying to do here is create a simple power app using pre-built ai uh, and the goal is that we should be able to click an image of a receipt um, or upload an image of a receipt and then the model should be able to extract key pieces of information that you need for your expense report and should be able to create uh, an expense, expense report automatically. So let's see. Uh, so again, this is a very simple canvas page. Uh, we have uh, scan your receipt and just an X button here. I'll click and upload the receipt. So I went to uh, buy lunch yesterday and I have a receipt from there. I'll open that up. As soon as uh, the image is uploaded, model starts to identify uh, information from the receipt. And once it has done the identifying, you can go to the next screen and submit the expense claim. So you see the black, uh, the blue rectangles, they kind of show yeah. identification. Yeah. We'll click next. It'll populate a set of fields that I have chosen, right? Just a simple example. So merchant name, transaction date, uh, and total. And uh, I'll hit and a sandwich. sandwich. So the expense is submitted. Um, we will we go over to uh, the SharePoint list, which is uh, a list uh, where all the expense reports should show up, and we should have a new entry there. So you see? Just like that. Uh, Look at that. Just like that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Instant. Yes, it brings all the relevant information that I chose to be there, and then uh, it uploads the image as well that uh, it picked from. Incredible. Hmm. You know, I'm First related, of all, amazing but... choice of uh, sandwiches, by the way. <laughs> I heard yeah. Albert mention sandwich earlier, and uh, I agree. That is yeah, amazing, it's making but, me hungry. Yeah, but amaz amazing to see how quickly you were able to pull that data from that receipt. And again, the application looks very similar and very, very kind of simple, right? It has two screens. Yep. One screen we saw, which is just a, a scanner tool, which uh, scans mm -hmm. the image. As soon as the image is uploaded, um, the AI model runs underneath uh, and extracts all the information. And then the second screen is mostly a form, which submits to a SharePoint list. And we have a working application. This is pre-built AI. Receipt understanding is a pre-built model in AI Builder and could be leveraged anywhere you work processing receipts, for example. Incredible. Wow. That's awesome. amazing. I mean, well, first of all, before you even continue, uh, uh, um, it's unrelated, but I hope you got some honey mustard on that sandwich. I think it's a, <laughs> it's a top tier topping. But um, other than that, is there something that can be done with expense reports 
and you know, you know, not asking, you know, maybe I might have went on a trip recently, and it it would be great to be able to upload uh, these receipts the same way you was able to uh, upload a uh, sandwich. Yeah, sure. So um, again, one of the other demos that I wanted to talk about is uh, a custom ML demo, right? Where we are actually building uh, the ML component uh, or the model behind it. Um, and uh, let's take a look at that. So what we have here is uh, is invoices, right? So we get invoices at work a lot of times when we're working with the external vendors uh, and we need to process that invoice, right? So again, very similar example. I'll, this time I'll upload the invoice uh, in a SharePoint uh, and not uh, an application. So let's go do that. Wonderful. i go pick uh, some invoice data that I have. So the previous example was an example of working with Power Apps. Apps, right? This example, we are working with uh, Power. So it's an automation workflow. So you won't see an application running, but what's happening is we have uploaded uh, uh, an invoice to uh, SharePoint. And what happens is there is a Power app which is waiting for that clue. As soon as a new invoice or a file is uploaded to that SharePoint, it'll get into action. It'll take that uh, PDF in this case, extract all the relevant information that I've already trained it for, and then move that information somewhere else so that an approval workflow can happen there. Right? So what happened was the file got uploaded. Mm -hmm. And in a few minutes, we should see. Uh, so the flow should be, the automated flow would be running in the background, right? If I refresh, let's see if the flow has finished. We should see a third entry here. So not, not yet. Um, let's give it a Let's, let's give it one more refresh, to see if it pops up. That's right. Yeah, there you go, right? So the, this go. last, uh, the latest kind of thing. So what it's extracting is, oh. is again, key pieces of information that I have asked it for. So invoice number, due date, billing address, some shipping, total, whatnot. And then link to the original uh, invoice as well. And then what, what I also did in the flow was I had, uh, uh, had it send an email to me, right? So as soon as my email opens, uh, we can see a new, uh, email that has a uh, new invoice process, right? So under the hood here is a simple flow, right? And the flow is waiting for a file to be created mm -hmm. uh, in, in a given mm -hmm. shape point. Uh, and when the file is there, it, it kicks in, it extracts that file content, runs it through an AI model that I have trained, and it finds out all those key pieces of information that I asked it to look for. Uh, and then it Incredible. sends an email. Incredible. It also moves it to a new uh, SharePoint list. And the model building experience is very simple. So that's, this is something I really, really uh, am passionate about. I want to show, right? So for example, this is the model that I had trained. Uh, if you go to the edit the draft again, you give it a few minutes to seconds to load in. Oh, so it's there. So you see, it's, it's a workflow here. Here it's a, it's a wizard approach, right? So you're not writing code, you're drag and dropping, you're telling uh, the system things. In this case, I've told it, these are the things that I want to extract uh, from invoices. And I have given it a collection of uh, training data. Mm -hmm. right. right, so my, my collection of training data has files, right? So I gave it five documents and then I, I tag those documents. So if I look at a few documents, so if this is my data, I would have to hold it where is the invoice. So, I mean, I could drag and draw, kind of rectangle around various pieces of information that are of interest and say, hey, here is what I want you to extract. And once mm -hmm. I've tagged those five uh, pieces of uh, five invoices, I have said, go train the model, right? And get out, out of it is a train model. Then. These, these are examples okay. of that. So it, it is simple, right? I mean, yeah. if you don't I mean, know how to do that, just flag drop. No, she's absolutely. And I think just, just taking a look at this, right, and just seeing how easily you were able to 
create this flow, right? And be able to extract that data from the invoices and just thinking about this at scale, right? And, and thinking about it from an industry level and how much time can be saved, how much money can be saved. Because this is this is a task that nobody wants to do on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Just being Absolutely able to not. automate this process and have the AI do the work for you. I think it's instrumental, right? And I think it's absolutely incredible to actually see this in action and just see how simple and easy it is. And like you said, the drag and drop, you know, capabilities of this without a single line of code being used is is something that's like music to my ears, to be honest with you. Same. You know, it it could be said that that uh that saving time like this can can really boost work life balance. It can it can uh it can really pave the way for um innovation and creativity just having more time to uh make your best work so this is this is truly outstanding absolutely and again when you come to ai builder um and again can come to ai builder uh, via aka.ms try ai builder uh, if you go to the website uh, you will land here in the explore page and explore page shows you uh, the collection of models that we have and their collection, the collection has pre-built models and custom model as well. So the first example was a pre-built model, and then the second one was a custom model that I trained based on my own data uh, to get a custom model out of that uh, training. So th there we have. Yeah, Amazing. That was awesome, Ashish. And again, thank you so much for being part of the show today and showcasing AI Builder and all the amazing capabilities for it. And looking forward to having you on the show again to dive a little bit deeper into some of those scenarios. And Albert, I'll pass it to you if you have any other words that you want to close out with. Yeah, of course. Uh, again, I want to echo Rob. Thank you so much for taking us through all of this. It, it really gets me more comfortable to try out AI because, again, it's something that can seem very out there and challenging, but just seeing stuff such as pre-built models and, and and like really having these opportunities to build and create um, without doing too much, like in the low code settings, I'm I'm very excited for this. So you know, thank you for uh, yeah. this well, again, Ashish. Well said, Albert. Right, AI can be very daunting, right, especially for citizen developers. And our mission is to make that simple and easy to understand and easy to use. And th that's what we are after. Thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you guys. Absolutely. Thank you all for watching and see you on the next episode. All right. All right. And we are back. I hope you all enjoyed that segment. Really, really amazing stuff, Ashish. I, I, I'm truly excited for all of the stuff that you were able to showcase for AI Builder in that small frame of time. But AI is way more deep and way more vast than that. And I think I would love to take this opportunity to really get a deep dive. And Ashish, you, you kind of mentioned it before, right? We got to look at the cake. We got to look at the food, right? But we need to know the recipe. What are those ingredients that go into making some of these scenarios a reality, right? And I would love to see if the tech allows us to do so. We had a little bit of tech issues before. So hopefully we'll be able to make that happen today. But Ashish, I'll pass it over to you and uh, get started with some of this deep dive into the AI Builder user experience. And feel free, viewers, add into the chat. I see a few questions came up, um, but add your questions in there and we'll be more than happy to answer them as we go through through the session. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Albert. Good to see you guys. Good um, to see you. Super excited to be here. Uh, and it's always exciting to talk about AI, uh, especially when it's for everyone, right? Uh, of course. And that is the kind of goal that we always shoot for. How do we make it easy to hey, understand AI and consume AI? And uh, how do we also make it relatable? Right, so let me share my screen and see. Uh, give me feedback if you guys can see the screen. Yeah. I have hit share. Screen on it. Looking, looking good. It's looking good. I can see it pretty clear on my end. Uh, really? If anybody in the chat, viewers, let us know if you can see it clearly as well. But from my end, I can see it. Perfect. Um, so this is uh, something that we call our explore page. Um, and let me just give you a quick lay of the land. Right? I hit make.powerapps.com. Uh, uh, if you do make.powerautomate.com, you'll still come uh, to a similar looking view. It's just is uh, your focus, are you building a power app or are you building uh, an automated flow, right? So in this case, I hit uh, power apps. Uh, on the left uh, panel, we call left nav, you will see some of the most commonly used tools. Like if you're uh, building uh, an app, you will have 
app as the focus area. You'll have data to work with in the Dataverse, and you will also have AI Builder, right? So this is where you start your AI Builder journey. Um, explore pages where you see uh, all of the kind of model palettes, right? What models are available, and which should uh, you kind of play around with. Uh, models uh, underneath it is your kind of model, my models view, where you see your own models that you have built uh, over time. So let's go to our explore page. Uh, right now I'm looking at all models. It kind of shows you all everything that's available there. Uh, we also kind of added some categorization, like document-based model, where you're processing some documents. Uh, there is text-based models, right? Uh, structured data, and then uh, images for computer vision capabilities. And uh, you'll see a bunch of these tiles. Uh, they're all kind of clickable. Uh, they are uh, pre-built models, and the, there are a few ones which are known as custom models. Right? So pre-built are ready to go, just like in the demo, right? If I'm trying to process a receipt or an invoice or trying to identify uh, identity, right? So if you're doing know your customer kind of uh, application, then you could add identity model and uh, try to uh, extract information from any identity documents, whether it's driving license, passport, uh, social security card, uh, and then you can uh, do a check uh, with your database to see if this is a known user or not, things like that, right? Um, let's go to custom model because I feel, um, or maybe we start with sentiment analysis, right? So again, this is a pre-based, uh, pre-can model, pre-built. Uh, you can give it any text and it'll tell you the sentiment of it. So for example, I just, uh, while you guys were uh, talking earlier, I grabbed a headline from uh, CNN earlier. Um, I drop it here and hit analyze text. And again, it shows that it has a negative sentiment and it has a confidence score. So something like this is valuable if you're processing, let's say, um, customer, uh, doing a customer support kind of a thing, right? Uh, anything that's the feed that is coming in, you can add a sentiment model and you can then uh, say, hey, I want all my negative responses to flow. Uh, to go through this flow or all positive responses to go through another flow and things like that right so you could start building things like that you will see for every model you'll see uh, a button which is use in flow so if you're trying to automate a workflow you would hit that and you will start building a power automate flow uh, if you're trying to build an application right then you'll hit uh, use an app uh, and start building an application feel free to ask questions at any point um I'm Go over. Yeah, real, real quick, Ashish, and, and if we can go back to the actual um, user sure. experience there. So if, we, if we're looking at the different scenarios here, like, can you quickly just elaborate a little bit on like some of the differences between, you know, text recognition, document processing, receipt processing, you know, the identification reader, like, what are some of the key differences with, between those kind of scenarios there? So the key differentiator uh, in case of document processing is, uh, the volume of text is much larger, right? Um, you're working with, let's say, contracts, SOW blues, which are multi-page documents, right? So those models are fine-tuned to work with this multi-page form factor, right? So those are, are document processing models. Now, documents can be specific, right? You could have invoice as a document or receipt as a document. So there's more fine-tuning done on top of those models to make mm -hmm. them work better for an invoice scenario or a receipt scenario. Also, the model knows what I need to extract, right? So in case of receipt, it's trying to uh, take out your uh, uh, taxes um, and line items and things like that. Uh, in case of invoice, it's looking for billing addresses and things like that, right? So each model is fine-tuned a little bit. Similarly, identity, right? It's it's looking for identity of the person, expiration date of identity and things like that. So um, the kind of information would extract is different. You also asked about text model. Text model is similar to document model, but we are looking at different things, right? We are trying to extract sentiment. Also, it probably is a smaller kind of um, chunk of content that you're giving it. Uh, yeah. So you're doing sentiment analysis or you're trying to extract entities from uh, a given text or trying to uh, detect language or maybe do a translation job and things like that. Gotcha, awesome. Um, well, actually, could you hold on to that page before you leave? So uh, speaking of, um, of, uh, of the, Explorer page, are, are all those options there? Are those like predetermined? Is this something that uh, was gotten from community feedback? Like, hey, you know, these are the things that we want to see in terms of uh, simplifying using the AI processes in terms of the models. Uh, yeah, so yeah, 
you know, um, I'm just curious about it because the moment you do go over to the explore page, it's already pre-populated with these um, these options. Yeah, so it this is a pre kind of defined view right now in the sense it's not personalized in any sense. Right? That yes. hey, Rob would say the same view and Albert, you would say, see the same view. Um, the kind of models we are adding is constantly coming from customer feedback, right? When we started off with some and then customer said, we want receipt and uh, invoice understanding more natively, right? We don't want to kind of start building models if we don't have to, right? So absolutely, that's that's another consideration. The other thing is biggest challenge in AI for low code is um, a lot of times the developers here are citizen developers. These are business users. They're not kind of professional developers. They don't do coding uh, for for work, right, or for a living. Uh, yep. So they're trying to sounds, solve sounds some like real real life problem, right? They're mostly after a real life problem. How do I solve this, right? And we're trying to get them a tool which kind of relates to that problem, which brings tech closer to that uh, problem, right? So, and specifically for AI, they don't come looking for AI. They're looking for, hey, there is an email in this other language and I want to kind of get it in a different language and I want to extract something out of it, right? We The biggest thing that we go after is how do we make AI relatable, right? How do we kind of bring it closer to their scenario, to their business problem so that it feels more natural, it feels more sem seamless to go grab this information or grab this style, say, hey, I'm processing receipts, let me grab this versus go do document processing or build your own document processing model, right? So that that's the challenge, that's what we're always after. What are those connection points that we can kind of give people? 100%. Yeah, makes awesome. great sense. Cool. So uh, what I really wanted to also kind of jump into was uh, an experience around uh, how do we build a model, right? So we saw in the demo uh, earlier, there was this uh, invoice processing model, right? So invoice can be processed automatically because there's a pre-built model, but I wanted something else from my invoice. I want to extract something else. So I can go and build my own invoice processing, right? So in this case, I picked, um, I want to create a structured document because invoices have a flow. It's not uh, unstructured in that sense. And then I went and picked some examples. So let's walk through. So you'll see a workflow um, here that it'll guide you, it'll take you through that journey of building a model, right? Um, so I picked up some documents. I Initially, I picked five documents that I want to bring in and uh, build the model. Let's see if you add new, uh, and you'll see all those five documents here. If you're trying to update this model, let's say it's not performing well in certain scenario, right? And I add uh, a new uh, um, kind of piece to it. So if I go back and uh, say, hey, I want to add a document. And that document is somewhere in my uh, machine. So I go. pick some sample files that I have around invoices. And let's say one of the tests that I have not shown it, uh, and this, this is an interesting one because this specific document, I made some edits, okay? So by default, that model that I trained uh, would not have picked it up or might have, right? But uh, it could give us low score sometimes because it's handwritten text, right? So document go over and see different in this one right i've scribbled up uh, some stuff here right so in this case i'll give model more examples of things that it has not seen right? generally model would um, uh, give low confidence on things that it has not seen and it's not sure about it right so the moment you realize that you want to give it more examples of that hey this is also uh, an example of where you can grab this information and you can update it right so for example tagging experience simple I come here and say, hey, this text here is an invoice. Right? This text here is a uh, balance amount, right? things like that. And then this text here is um, total. Right? You see a table here, right? Uh, we can also tag a table and say, hey, you want to I want to extract all of this information. Right? And uh, it's an item table. Right? When we come here, it gives us a very simple UI of uh, it has identified columns. Uh, I can mark here all the rows here. Okay. And 
and I can shift this to make it look a little more precise. If I'm happy, look at that! Look at that precision you got there, man. <laughs> Super I needed and this, then, man. This one is not uh... okay. Beautiful. There, my table looks good. So I would say, okay, I'm done with this. Oh, one thing I forgot is the top item is uh, top row is not a uh, uh, an item field. It's actually header. So I'll say, okay, first row, ignore that. So now it just extracts everything. And I'm say, I'll, I'm done, right? A few other fields like due date, if I, uh, I'm not gonna sit down and tag anything, but you get the point, right? I mean, I've tagged more important fields right now, but you can, for example, go due date, um, say so this thing is a due date. And, uh, or let's do it. Um, build two, so we'll tag this as build two. We'll tag this as email. So basically, I'm picking stuff that uh, I need uh, and well, telling them all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, here like is what you from where you find everything, right? So it's, there's no coding experience. Just drag and drop stuff, uh, point to things, and just tell them all where it needs to find stuff, right? So now finish this document, marked it as purple. Everything is done. I say next um, to all new examples that I wanted to show the model. I've shown it. And I say, go train, mm -hmm. right? It'll take some time It'll run the training job. Uh, and within a few minutes, we'll have a new version so, of the same. And now it can understand some handwritten text on the receipts as well, or invoices. I just want to say, uh, like, uh, are we just going to gloss over the fact that uh, that she's inked on the page and was able to turn <laughs> that ink? <laughs> I mean, I, I thought that was amazing. Like he literally inked on the page uh, and he was able to put that into the model. So text-based, even handwritten stuff as well. That's yep. that's pretty yep. impressive. Yep. Good and news from our service is trained, re ready to go. Yeah. So one of the other things I wanted to uh, talk about is um, building models is easy. I mean, we see this all the time with working with professional developers that they build models and a large portion of those models never end up in being used or in an application. The power of Power Platform, or just low-code uh, uh, tools here, is you can take this model and quickly translate it into something meaningful that you can use, right? So we saw in the example that we had the model and we tied it up with a flow, right? So um, right here, oh no, this one. Sorry, this one. Um, so here is the flow, which is actually using the same exact model. Now that model that we just built, updated here, uh, is ready to go because we have overridden the previous version with a new version, right? So ready to go. Uh, in our flow, it again is a very simple interface or similar interface where flow is a collection of steps, right? So the first step was, hey, go grab the file from the SharePoint. If, a new file ever lands there, um, grab that new file. I could even have an additional earlier step that if an email lands into my mailbox and it has an attachment, go download it here, right? So whenever the email comes, attachment gets downloaded to the SharePoint. Whenever there's a new file in the SharePoint, it'll grab that, right? And then what it is doing is I'm saying, grab the content of that document, right? And give it to this model that I've built, right? Model is uh, the same invoice processing model. Once the model processes uh, that file, it now knows those entities that I asked it to recognize the invoice number, the due date, the shipping value, the wow. total value. Okay? And then what I'm saying is, hey, Gook, uh, take all of this value, individual values, and put them in a SharePoint list because my approval workflow is working on top of a list or something. Right? It also kind of informs me with an email that, hey, all of this information has been processed, or if it fails, it'll do the same thing. It'll say, hey, I was not able to process this email. You can go back to that specific uh, file and bring it into your training data and further improve your model. That's beautiful. Absolutely impressive. Uh, impressive. We actually had a few questions uh, as you were going through the demo, she so I, I, I hope you don't mind to answer some of them that came up. Uh, but the first one is from Paolo Piovano. Hope I pronounced that properly. Um, and the question is, what is the limit number of collections that we can have? If I'm not wrong, there are, you can have 500 collections uh, for a model. 
And the idea behind collections is uh, if you're processing email, if you're a business, right, you're working with different suppliers, right, they might all have slightly different uh, form factor of how they kind of build their invoices, right? But the information that you are trying to extract are common, right? So you want to take nuances of all these different suppliers and their formats so you can create collection of all your suppliers, have some examples, five examples in each of those uh, collections and what you get is very consistent information because you're looking for the same information uh, from those suppliers. Awesome. Cool. And then real quick, so like as we talk about document processing and being able to extract information, right? I think a common question that tends to come up is when we look at intelligent document processing all up, I think to kind of define what the difference is between IDP when it comes to using it within uh, syntax whether it comes within using it with AI builder or AI services. Can you just elaborate a little bit on some of the key differences between the three forms of IDP that are available out there? Absolutely, right. very, very good question. Great question, actually. Um, it starts with the same intent, right? Uh, that make AI accessible and uh, understandable and usable uh, in its kind of more organic form factor. So for example, if people are very comfortable working with uh, SharePoint, right? Give them embedded AI in shape that they can use it right there, right away. That's syntax for you, right? Mm -hmm. If you are um, trying to get things out of share, in and out of SharePoint or do some other workflows, then uh, Power Automate or IDP is the way to go that you want to curate the, your own workflow. You want to build out things on your own, right? Um, all of this is still built on top of the same form processing that you get from Azure AI that you talked about, right? So if you're a developer and you want to just not care about any of that and build your own experiences, the same underlining technology is still available to you. So the form factors change, but the tech is same, right? So if you're a professional developer, mm -hmm. you're getting access to the same state-of-the-art tech. If you're a citizen developer, you're still getting the access to the same state-of-the-art uh, tech. It's just it's available in different form factor, which resonate uh, in your situation with your situation. Yeah, incredible, absolutely incredible, and I love the ability to kind of diversify mm -hmm. how we're using that technology. Albert, you had something? Uh, no, no, uh, I was uh, actually trying to look for the next question too. In the, in the chat. Yeah, so we had one more in the chat. I'm not sure if you were able to elaborate that uh, enough, but we had one, uh, probably not going to pronounce this correctly, but I'll start with the first part, which is Bala. Uh, and they were asking to share more on how to download the flow. Yeah, so there you go. So flow, the couple of things that you could do from a download perspective, right? Um, I don't know the intent of the question, so I'll, I'll try to answer what what um, I know for sure, right? So sometimes uh, think of when you're building the um, the flow or the app, right? You you put on the hat of a maker. You're building something. You're solving a problem. Sometimes you you're not solving the problem for yourself, but for your entire team, right? So as a maker, you build certain things, but then that's not the environment that you're gonna use it in, right? You want to deploy it, right? So we call it the deployment workflow. So you wanna take it from an environment where you're developing things into an environment where you're gonna consume things, right? And that consumption is meant for larger teams. So I might have built a flow for myself, but my team of 25 is gonna use it for some workflow, right? So in those scenarios, you can add these flows into what's called a solution, right? It's a package, right? Sometimes your solution is a combination of a few flows, a few apps, a data set, and a model, something like that, right? So you can download the entire solution. We call it application lifecycle management. You download the package and then you upload it into a production environment uh, or an environment where you're going to use it versus build it, right? And you lock up things that you cannot change the model, or you, right? So you kind of put some restrictions. So that's something that's possible, and we call it deployment workflow or uh, applic application lifecycle management workflow. Awesome. Okay. So pretty much, you know, versus getting the, the same whole cake that you just made, what you're going to get will be the cake mix and every particular piece of ingredient that makes the cake along with instructions in that package that, you know, here's how you, you build a cake. We won't give you the same cake uh, built from the ground up, but here's exactly how you build it, right? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's more of um, okay. we built the cake here with all the ingredients, and we are serving copies of it, or we are serving the cake right. to you from a consumer standpoint. So think of producer persona and consumer persona, right? If that's right. another way to think about it. So Ashish, uh, we're gonna go into a topic that I think everybody likes to talk about. Uh, so everything in the world for the most part is not free, right? And I'm pretty sure that these AI models and scenarios are not as well. So what does the licensing look like for AI Builder? Like if somebody was interested in trying AI Builder today, how does it look to be able to incorporate some of these scenarios within their power apps or their automate flows? Like, is it, are you able to break that down a little bit just for the audience so we can kind of understand a little bit how the licensing structure works for AI Builder? Yeah, absolutely. And um, whenever we do an AI Builder session, that's one of the most <laughs> kind of popular topic. The, and the most popular reason, question. And for good reasons, right? It, it is not ideal. Um, and that is something we are, consciously and consistently ta- thinking and ideating and trying to simplify. But what I will say is um, our tool is meant for low code, no code. Our licensing should be that way as well. Right? It should be easy to understand, easy to consume, right? All of that, right? So cognizant of that, we're working on it. Today, uh, AI Builder gets seeded in. So when you buy, for example, Power Automate or Power Apps, right? It, some value of AI Builder gets seeded into it so that as you are exploring these tools, you can explore how to build AI into it or embed AI into it, right? And make them intelligent. Uh, once you're happy with that, you can add more credits of AI Builder to um, your subscription or your uh, license that you already have. So it's an add on capability that you can add. Uh, and a lot of these popular tools or the higher order kind of building tools, they get seeded with AI building credits. Um, we're trying to constantly look at ways to simplify that, make it easy to understand. A lot of people ask about, hey, if I run this model or this workflow 10,000 times, right, how much credits will I consume? So mm-hmm. we have something called a calculator. Uh, which kind of gives you a sense, hey, if you're running an invoice model versus a receipt model versus this model, right? How much credits are you going to consume and things like that? So we're constantly trying to uh, make it more transparent, let's say. That's it. Awesome. Yeah. And I know the licensing has been a, a big topic, so definitely wanted to bring that up just to kind of elaborate as much as we can on that and, and try to give a, a good feedback. But definitely, as, as, as Ashish mentioned, it's something that's continuously being worked on. We're taking the feedback and making sure that we make it as easily accessible as possible. Awesome. Well, I think that might be wrapping it up unless we have a few more questions in the chat that might pop up in the meantime. Um, super excited, again, uh, Ashish, to have you on the show and be able to really showcase AI Builder. I absolutely love AI Builder, as you know, but wanted to be able to highlight it and be able to, to showcase what the power of no-code AI solutions look like. Um, and I'm hoping that we're able to do a little bit more of this in the future, be able to take a look at some more scenarios and, and, and really dive even deeper. Um, but if there is any other anything else that you want to touch on, any other resources that people can go and check AI Builder out, or any kind of go tos, you know, feel free to share them out. Yeah, um, the easiest go to or place to try out AI Builder is go to ak.ms try slash try AI Builder. Um, you will get to the explore page once you can kind of sign in. Uh, that's an easiest way to experiment uh, and play around with the tool. There's a bunch of documentation that you can get to from Microsoft Learn pages. Um, and then even the Explore pages, we have added a bunch of templates, uh, a bunch of examples, a bunch of videos for new users to try out things. Um, we are in constant uh, journey to simplify AI. Um, there's a ton of uh, AI thing all over the place. Um, our goal is how do we kind of package it up in an easy form factor and make it easy, super easy to use. Uh, so that's the jet we are on. Hopefully you'll enjoy this. Awesome. Thank you again, Ashish. And uh, Albert, I'll pass it to you if you have any uh, last words before we hand it back to Seth. Yeah, same thing. Well, actually, I was looking in the chat and I think there was one more uh, from Bala and and they had asked uh, if uh, if Flow is built in uh, or need to install separately on Windows. Uh, it's not it's not built in. Uh, well, at least not to my knowledge. But I believe it, that you can use it on you know mobile or different browsers, different things. As long as you you know you're uh, subscribed or you have a package, something in place. So, but yeah. I'll hand it over to the expert. 
Yeah, let me clarify that. So, so all of these tools are cloud tools, right? You don't need to install anything. You can just go use it on the cloud once you're on your browser, right? However, uh, for Flows, what we have done is we have also integrated it into Windows, right? So we call it desktop uh, flow. Um, so if you go to Windows 11, uh, it's integrated, Power Apps is integrated, or Power Automate is integrated rather uh, into, so you could automate some of your desktop workflows, right? You're processing your emails, you're trying to do some redundant workflow that you want to automate, you can do it because now it's pre-packaged, already installed as part of uh, Windows. Okay, well then, that's wonderful. There you have it, either or, right? So it could be desktop, it could be cloud, whatever meets your needs, you're able to do it. I, for one, I can't wait to uh, make these invoices a lot simpler. So I'll save some time. <laughs> Sure. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Happy holidays from us. And hopefully we will be able to hop on the AI show again. But I'll hand it back to Seth. Seth, what do you think? That was delightful. <laughs> well done. <laughs> thank you, Ashish. Thank you, Albert. Uh, uh, thank you, Rob. And uh, hopefully we'll see you all next time. More yeah. power. We should have like a power hour on how to do AI. I, that's not... Yeah. Did I just come up with a rhyme that no, y'all have probably power used this hour. many times? Power that sounds hour. like an idea to me, and I would love, yeah, love to be able yeah. to do something like that. So oh, yeah, all right. Yeah. Well, we'll see y'all later. Take care. All Thank right. You. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. How delightful was that? Huh? Mm, such good dudes. Uh, and by the way, the thing that I like the most about all of that, and if we're gonna give them a, a little round of applause there, is um AI is really accessible to everybody. And to me, it's just like software built with data. That's it. Uh, you do have to be a little bit more ethical about it because you got to think about what you're doing. But overall, I think it's a great it's a great thing. Okay. Uh, so in the last hour of the AI show, I actually have to get some work done. And I was hoping uh, maybe um, y'all could, y'all could help me out. Uh, and, uh, like I, I got a pop filter on my mic now, so, um, you can hear me much better. So let me share my screen here again, and let's get a little reminder about what I was working on. Um, I'm working on a little, uh, a little library called Fibber, and I need to make some data to do some auto automated machine learning. So let me show you what that, what that looks like. Uh, so you can get a sense for why it is that I'm building data. So let me bring up uh, Azure Machine Learning here, which is the tool, which is the, huh, let me let me do the, the pitch. With Azure Machine Learning, you and your organization can build complex machine learning models in a group by yourself or with your friends. Everyone, please use automated machine learning today. Like, I feel like I could be doing voiceovers. Uh, this is Azure Machine Learning, by the way. Uh, and the cool thing about Azure Machine Learning uh, is if you're wanting to build your own models, this is a cool new thing that I've found. Here, let me let me get my ugly face out of the way here. <clears throat> you can actually turn on features for this stuff. And uh, the, the, pl the place to go to is ml.azure.com. I don't know why all that stuff comes up. I thought I'd turn that off. By the way, let me, let's just do this right now. How do you turn all of this off? Edit background. I want, um, let's see here. How do you turn all of this off? Uh, feature view. Oh, I just, I don't want the greeting. I want the greeting off. Show sponsors. Oh, it looks like it's not letting me do that anymore. So this is where you turn it off, but maybe because I'm logged in as a, an employee, it makes me look at all this stuff. But I don't want to. Um, layout, custom, focused. There you go. I did it. I did it focused uh i'm still in the room here it feels like what's going on so there you go turn it off so if you want to go to learn about ml ml.azure.com is the azure machine learning place to go to um but i fly dangerously i go into the main branch of our code um so yeah uh, and then for those of you that are wondering, we've been recently working on our Rochambeau stuff. Um, here, let me put my face back in here. 
We've been working on Rochambeau. Here, let me put it at the bottom here, so that way there's more room. We've been working on Rochambeau, and this is where we do all our stuff. So if you look at like the last couple of things we did, Rochambeau, Rochambeau, Rochambeau. This is the model we built, etc. But there's something there's something interesting called automated machine learning, and I wanted to do a tabular example. A tabular example. Turn music on. A tabular example, and I wanted to do an automated machine learning um, example for images. So, for example, let me let me do this. Automated machine learning, uh, um, RPS. I, w I wonder why it won't let me uh, show supported data assets only. And what supported data assets are they talking about? RPSN. So here's this. Uh, I think I think automated machine learning currently works on. Uh, let's take a look because I, I thought we could. Let's let's take a look. Uh, so automated automated machine learning uh, Azure. Let's go learn it together. Let's do this. Wow, man, we're not very good. It's like, what's going on here? I need to call somebody in marketing. What is automated ML? Let's go there. Um, we're going to use V2. Let's uh, zoom in here. Automated machine learning, also referred to as ML, automated ML or AutoML, is the process of automating the time-consuming iterative task of machine learning model development. It allows data scientists, analysts, and developers to build ML models with high scale efficiency and okay just tell me how it works identify the ml problem classification forecasting regression computer vision or nlp so for example if we're going to solve our rochambeau problem you know how we just picked we just picked the model <clears throat> the model that we picked i just yes i want to cancel the new job let's just get out of here so the last job that i did here's the rochambeau thing the last one we did was November 17th, about a month ago. And notice that um, I picked a ResNet 32, 34, but I don't know if that was even the right model, right? So this will work. So I don't have to work on the Fibber data thing yet. I, I, I bet I could do a sample with, with because uh, I, I need to build a sample to do that shows off automated machine learning. Uh, so I bet I can do I can do a vision one. So it looks like we, we're going to select vision. Uh, computer, choose whether you want it to, you want to a, oh man. Choose whether you want to a code first experience. Okay. Okay. I'm glad we're here, folks. It feels like we have a problem right here. Choose whether you want to Let's just fix it. Let's just fix it. Choose, choose whether you want to use a code for, we're just gonna pretend that this also happened in the back end. Let's just pretend. Choose whether you want to use a code first experience or a no code studio web experience. I feel like I am a code first guy. I like studio stuff. But I feel like it obfuscates the work, you know? I just, I don't like when things just like happen and you're like, hey, it did everything. That's great. I'd rather, I'd rather it be like, I did all of it. Yeah, look at how cool we are. Yes. It feels like, you know. Um. Users who prefer coder can use Azure ML SDK v2, which is basically a control plane SDK. Uh, and what I mean by that is you have code, you have code for um, you have code for doing the machine learning and you have code for controlling the machine learning. I know that's subtle, but it's important to know the distinction. There's the code that does the machine learning. I just poked myself in the eye. Oh my gosh. Code to do machine. We need to 
Ugh. Hold on. I just poked myself in the eye. Let's see if I did any damage. This eye. Gosh. I didn't know that uh, when I did live streaming. Oh, now you're seeing the, the door. I didn't know that when I did live streaming, it would be this dangerous. I just poked myself in the eye. Whew. Okay, back to this. Um, Azure MLS, okay, it's a control plane. And there's a subtle difference, again, for the code that does the machine learning and the code that controls the process for machine learning. Those are two different things. Two different things. Uh, and that's what the SDK v2 is for. So don't don't think that you can't. I have to write code for, I've told all our, I told all our PMs all the time. I was like, look, if our customers have to write more code to support us, let's not, let's just think about it. Uh, but th sometimes you do. Sometimes you want to automate the whole process to do advanced ML ops. And so we do have a control at plain SDK, but that doesn't have to infect. And I say infect in the nicest of ways. That doesn't have to infect your machine learning code. Like our Rochambeau code here, um, just to remind y'all, open recent here, uh, Rochambeau. Well, wow, y'all all see my secret projects. Um, and here, if you go to the AI bits, you'll see. Uh, oh, jeez, why did I expand this out like a like a goober? Let's just let's just close this. We don't need that. Okay, we don't need that. Uh, so, for example, in the data part, when we're doing data, notice that there really is, and you're, I'm saying notice, and everything's tiny. There you go. That's bigger. Uh, and let me close this. This is the one thing I don't, for some reason, it doesn't pull up my VEMV, my VEMV. I think we're going to call these VEMS, VEMS from now on. It's a Python virtual environment. VEMS. How you doing? Someone's going to call me on the phone and just be like, Hey, Seth, um, I just wanted to talk to you about some. Are you want to talk about the VEMV? Yeah, I wasn't sure what it was. What's a VEMV? Great question. It's an article of clothing I wear on the weekends that nobody knows about. Okay, so there's my VEMV. Uh, it picks it up. But for some reason, when it starts up, it doesn't pick it up the first time. But notice that as I was talking, th this control plane SDK stuff, that I'm talking about, it's not in here. Uh, because this is the machine learning code, not the machine learning control the process code. Here's the model code that we have for our Rochambeau. Notice there's nothing in here. I don't need this in there, it looks like. Beep, boop. I have like a whole thing of sound effects and I'm, I'm like, beep, boop. That's my sad. I, I pushed it because it said sad but I don't even remember what it was for. Gosh, my eye still hurts because I poked myself in the eye. Okay. <laughs> okay, we have a very important question. Caller. Hey, Seth, what's a VEMV? Great question, caller. Um, I got to make it so you folks can call in. Wouldn't that be delightful? Oh, I would love it. You can, like, ask questions. There's, we got to set this up for the next one. People just call in. I'm like, Our, okay, caller, tell us what's going on. Yeah, Seth, I'd like to get some advice on um, what VEMV to wear on the weekend. That's a great question, caller. There's so many options. Yeah, I thought there was so many options. Uh, yeah, there is. There's a lot of options. Can never go wrong with zebra stripes. Just saying. Just saying. Um zebra stripes notice again here that there's no code in here that has anything to do with azure ml it's just not in there uh because this is machine learning code but again we're doing we're doing uh we are doing a um <clears throat> we're going to be doing an sdk v2 or cli i think I, I like the cli better because it's like just do a thing oh i know ms dev you're right hi i'm phyllis first time caller long time listener Thanks for listening, Phyllis. How can I help you? Um, this is embarrassing for me. Um, the VEMV I'm wearing is too small. Yeah, that happened to me too. It was a 
revealing experience. These are the jokes. Azure ML SDK or Azure ML CLI. I think we'll use the CLI v2. <clears throat> Specify the source of the labeled training data. You can bring data to Azure ML in many different ways. Configure the automated machine learning parameters that determine how, yes. The following di <laughs> My favorite thing of all time, how to draw an owl. <laughs> in two steps. This is my favorite in two steps. Um, there is this owl picture I use for almost all of my presentation. That's hilarious. Hold on, images. Here. <laughs> no, let me open this up. It's like how to draw an owl in two steps. Oh, wow, there's a bad word there. So don't look at the bad word. How to draw an owl in two steps. Draw some circles. Draw the. Let's get one that's more safe for work. Holy cow! Wait, embarrass me, internet. Uh, open image and new tab. Here we go. Um, sometimes I feel like instructions are like this. Let's go back over here. The following diagram illustrates the process. Maybe it's because I poked myself in the eye. This looks really complicated. Um, user, user inputs, data, target metric. Okay. 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 It's not that bad. So we give it this and then it goes through this thing and then it creates a brand. You can also inspect the log job information, which contains metrics gathered during the job. The training job produces a Python serialized object or as, or as it's colloquially called the pickle file. Cause who doesn't love a good pickle? Oh, here's a good question. Uh, is um, is Bing a requirement for web search at Microsoft buildings? No, um, number one. Number two, I'm in my house. Uh, this is my house. Should we do the rest of the show this way or is this uncomfortable for you? Like right now would be the perfect time for like my computer to freeze and I just Do you ever wonder when you're on a when you're on a Teams call? <laughs> is Is your computer frozen or are you just staring at me? Good question. Good question. So there's a pickle file. While model building is automated, you can also learn how important relevant features are. Oh, this is cool. So this is another thing. I remember I showed this at a very huge bank, not in the United States, but in another country that was the largest bank of the country. And the data scientists were like, hey, um, is this going to take our job away as data scientists? No, no. Not at all. Uh, in fact, uh, data scientist job kind of stinks for the first two weeks of any new project because it's like, have we saved any of that data that we need to make this model? And then you're sitting there like for the rest of the day, literally being a data janitor like trying to figure out what features you're even going to use. And that's what automated machine learning is good at is that it will figure like, it, it, like even at you just basically turn it on the data and over the weekend, you, you know, like, all right. So when to use auto ML classification, regression, forecasting, computer vision, and NLP. Well, that's a pretty wide variety. Uh, so here's a question uh, again from uh, the keyboard warrior. Is that no, as in no, I wish I had, I need to get a sound effect so that when I do a wink, you know, but, but in all seriousness, breaking news. Um, I didn't time that right. Let's do that again. Uh, breaking news here at my house. Uh, we don't have to use Bing. If we don't want to, let me, let me time that a little better. 
This is Seth coming from my house to answer the question of Keyboard Warrior. No, we do not indeed have to use Bing, and that's no as in no. I almost timed it. Ship it. All right. Apply automated ML when you want Azure Machine Learning to train and tune a model for your for you using the target metric you specify. Uh, build it good. There's is there a Dropbox for just build it good? I'm gonna have to like put an eye drop in here. Like I got so excited, I poked my own eye with my thumb. If you weren't here for that, it was harrowing. Justin, Seth Juarez poked his eye during a live stream. He's okay. Ambulances are on their way. That was timed really well. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to clip that. If you're on Twitch, you can clip that. ML professionals and developers across industries can use automated ML to implement ML solutions without extensive programming knowledge. I don't like that. I like my programming knowledge. Save time and resources. I do like that. Leverage data science best practices. I like that too. And provide agile problem solving, as in you're flying. I think for us, uh, our problem is straight classification problem, right? Here's our images, and there's our, our categories. Um, there's our images, and there's our categories. Okay. It's a classification problem. Um, you can also find a list of automated machine learning uh, algorithms here. Look at all those goodnesses. I don't know of a logistic regression. Uh, I don't think any of these things. Uh, why? This feels wrong. I thought... This is weird. Why are they calling... I need to ask about this. Because it feels like we're conflating we're, let's see, let's see, SGD, stochastic, stochastic, by the way, if you're ever, and it sound really smart at like a cocktail party, and you're like, you know, you're all just with a group of people, and you're like, hi, yeah, my name is Seth, and uh, I figured we'd talk about stochastic gradient descent, and what, what are your feelings about it? You know, it makes you sound smart if you do that, so, but I don't, Oh, wow, that song is playing on channel three, too. I don't like that. Um, I don't like that we're calling stochastic gradient descent. Oh, here it is. Uh, let me go back. Let me go back. This this isn't a classification. Here, let me let me tell you what I'm talking about, because I'm, I'm like saying stuff and I was like, what the heck are you talking about, Seth? I don't know. Let me let me. Let me lay the knowledge down here if I can. Thank you. Touch is on. Touch is on. We have we have we have our data, right? That's used to train. This needs to be featureized. Featureized. I'm gonna use like this little symbol, right? So the data goes into the featureization part. And then and then the important part is you also, as another step, you have to pick a structure. You have to pick a structure. Then what you do is you pass this data through that structure and optimize its internal parameters and out you get this model that I'm gonna I'm gonna put in as a cube. That's the process. That's the process. It turns out that the model update is almost always stochastic gradient descent. The model structure is something else, like a like a decision tree or a naive Bayes classifier or or a perceptron or a neural network neural network or some deep learning thing. But SGD is the methodology for optimizing the parameters within that model. That's why I'm having like, I'm having like a existential crisis right now with them saying SGD is a classification algorithm. SGD is an optimization algorithm. Gradient descent, basically what it does is it looks at a function like the decision tree function. And what it tries to do is it takes the first derivative of the function and attempts to march along the area of steepest descent to the lowest part of the function. 
stochastic simply means we're doing it in batches because we don't have access to all the data. That's all that means. And so that's why I'm having a hard time. I might, I might, I might call them and just be like, Hey, this feels wrong. Okay. So let's do this. Um, image classification to multi class. So that's what we're doing. See, there we go. There we go. Oh, see, look at that. They try all these things. Oh, I pushed the wrong one. They try all these things. We, we stuck with a ResNet 34. We've done a ResNet 50. Um, uh, oh, YOLO. This is object detection. YOLO V5. Uh, I remember I did uh, YOLO V3 a couple of years ago. Delightful algorithm. Uh, mask RCN. This is for object detection, and then this is for image segmentation. Cool. So let's do this. Uh, should we do... Let's do CLI. I see. I see. So do we have to pick the default model? So how does this work? I see. I see. Uh, okay. I see what, what's going on. Uh, so what do we got here? So let's scroll to the top. Okay. Computer vision. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. We got that. So we're doing image classification. CLI V2. Uh, the task is object. No, not object detection. We want um, we want an image classification. So we just select that. In order to generate computer vision, model, you need to you need to you need to bring label data as an input for the model train in the form of an, of an ML table. You can create an ML table from training data in JSON L format. Interesting. And this is something I've never done before. Uh, because right now, right now, our data is in file form, <laughs> but ML table, that's interesting. So I need to look up what an ML table thing is. Um, so let's, uh, let's open this again and let's go here and let's learn about ML tables together. ML table, do, 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 do. ML table. ML table is a way to abstract a schema definition for tabular data. So the image data is not tabular data unless, unless, unless we are just having like a path entry, you know, like a list. The idea scenario to use ML table, the, com the schema of your data is complex. Man, my eyeball. Update on the eyeball situation. It still hurts. More at 11. I really poked my eye. What if I can't see anymore? That's okay. The scheme of your data is complex and or changing. You need a subset of data. For example, a sample of rows or files, specific columns. Interesting. Automobile jobs requiring tabular data. If your scenario does not fit the above, then it's likely that URIs are the most suitable. Okay, cool. So um, it looks like AutoML jobs require tabular data. Okay. You just want to create a data, set, a data asset for your job. Or you want to write your own parsing logic and finally use URI file. Okay, cool. So file or folder, this is clever. So um, what I'm looking at, what I'm looking at now is, let's go to this good, this bad boy here. It looks like for data formats, uh, we have, um, oh. In Azure ML, it looks like for data formats, we have three, right? You have the ML table, uh, which specifies uh, like tabular data. Then you have a URI, URI file, which says point the, the training at this file. And then you have URI folder. And I think what we were doing when we were rolling our own thing is we were doing the folder thing. That's what it feels like we were doing. I know. We, we might need, like, next time it might be like, I might have an eye patch on. Uh, yes. By the way, if you have any questions, just pop them in the chat. I'm I like when, on my eye line right here. My screen is right there. The screen that you're seeing over here, all of this is right here for me. And then your chat stuff is just so if I'm going like this, it's because of the chat stuff. So just feel free to ask questions. Okay. Uh, the source of if you want, okay. The YAML syntax detail is always based on just blah, 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 blah. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Paths. Paths can be a file path. Okay. Let's scroll down. Here's an example. Type ML table paths. I don't know what this means.
Okay, let's look at the examples here. Examples. Beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, beep, beep. Sample ML tables. Uh, okay. I'm trying to figure out, like, where's the example? Uh, oh, here we go. Here we go. Prepare. It's like right there. Support for training computer vision models with automated was experimental public preview feature. Ooh, ooh. Seth Juarez currently using experimental features that are in public preview. More at 11. In this article, you you learn how to prepare image data for training computer vision models with automated machine learning. Cool. To generate models, you need to bring labeled images. Okay. You can create ML table from labeled. Okay, I get it. If your label training is a different, like Pascal. By the way, these these are for for object detection. They're like object detections. Um, Coco, uh, you go, Glenn Coco. You can use a conversion strip. That's fine. To first convert JSON L and then create an ML table. I'll tell you, you can use Azure Machine Learning Data Labeling Tool. Do I want to do that though? Because I I, I already have the labels. Familiar, familiarize yourself with JSON L. Okay, JSON L. Image classification. JSON. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. So I need to write some code to create a JSON L file. Wow. I don't know if I like that. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So let's do this. Instead of me whining like a five-year-old boy who did not get the cookie at night. And I want a cookie. Where's my cookie? I want a cookie. Give me a cookie. Let's just do it. Okay. So Jason L is just Jason, but each line represents its own thing. Um, interesting. Okay, so let's take this, let's copy this, and let's uh, let's go into our our new hickey here. This is good. I have to do this, so um, let's do this. New file, new file. Um, um, uh, Rochambeau. Dot Jason L. Beep boop. Again, apologies. <laughs> that I do not have a beep boop. And so it looks like we have to, what we have to do is we have to write a script that takes a takes the file folder path and then creates creates this stuff. So let's do that. Uh let's do this. Uh let's do new file um um where are you at? Okay. Okay. Uh Gen uh, auto ML dot py, and then we'll say if um, come on, where is where is my copilot? If a uh, name, there you go. Boop. Slow down. Wow, wow, copilot, slow down, slow down. Slow your roll. Uh, let's see. Path. Path. And we'll just say this is of type. Patos. No, no. We'll do stir. stir. 
we'll do stir. Uh, so this would be base base path, base path, and then uh, URI path. And you're probably wondering, what the heck is? What do you mean URI path? Um, oh wow, this is cool. I don't need all that, but thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, from from pathlib pathlib import path bn 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 uh and then we want to also um boop, 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 boop. uh what is the uh what is the uh the parsing thing um there we go it's like it read my mind was that bananas or what it literally just read my mind i'm like where's the parsing thing and it read my mind <laughs> yeah, thanks for reading my mind, co-pilot. Look at that! <laughs> it wrote the whole thing. It, it wrote the whole thing for me. Did Was anyone there watching where I was like, what's the parsing thing? And then I pressed tab, and then it's like, you mean... Hold on, it was a robot, so... Do you mean this? Yes, co-pilot. You are welcome. No problem. Maybe you should go out to lunch. Yeah, maybe I should, and you can just write the rest for me. Was that crazy? <laughs> no, seriously, that's bananas. That I was like, what's that parse thing? And then I, like, pressed tab, and it was it. Okay, dokily. Base path equals path. Path of the base path. Um, and then uh, uh, dot resolve dot full path. Uh, full absolute absolute. And then I can just say, there you go. <laughs> We're so going to be out of a job. <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to control plus just so you can get a sense for what... I don't need to go that big. It's fine. This is fine. This is fine. Uh, if uh, BP dot exists uh, and, and UP dot exists, then we can do the thing. Uh, pass. Uh, no, uh, no, 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 no. else uh boom <laughs> oh this one we don't need to resolve Th this is not a resolve resolvable one because that needs to look like azure ml uh uh if uh if not nice Okay, look at us writing some Python. Boom. Uh, control Z. Control Z. Because I know someone's from Vancouver. So we got to say Z for folks. By the way, for those that are wondering, like, what the heck are you doing? I'm trying to figure out what a better model is for all of this stuff. And so I'm going to try to auto amelify it now uh, is what I'm doing. Looks like, <laughs> looks like somebody did clip me poking my eye. Hopefully. Hopefully. So if you're on Twitch... Go follow me on Twitch. It's just at Seth Juarez. <laughs> Put myself in the eye. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let me. I'm gonna tweet this out. Twitter. Um. Uh. Just poked, po poked myself in the eye during a live stream. Stream. Colon, how's your day going? AKA.ms, MS, AI show live. What will happen? So clickbaity. Oh man, that is just clickbaity. Boom. <clears throat> Okay, look at that. There you go. People are. Oh, hello, Diego. Bienvenido, amigo. Bienvenido. Okay. 
Okay, and remember our um, here's our da our data's over here, and we have the Rochambeau. So we need to get the we need to get the format here. Let's get a line out. Okay, uh, and then we'll put this in a quote up here so I can I can remember. Oh wow! I love that that it it's remembered. Uh, that it's a comment. Okay. Okay. Cool. So we're going to have to figure out this de this this thing, how we can point to it. The image details, I think we can get uh, just by uh, going to the raw because it will tell us at the end, right? Hold on, move this over. It will, yeah, it'll it'll ping. It's a ping file, and then we could probably get the size of it with Python, you know, just with the something. Some. Okay. 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 Uh. Okay, uh, let's see here. This might be also be a problem because I'm assuming, I'm assuming there's a lot of assumptions. Like I'm assuming that these images are going to be inside of Azure ML. So let's go to our data. I wonder if we should. Um, no, because we don't want data. We want data. We want so there's a difference between data assets and data stores. Data assets are like things we use to train. Data stores are like connections. I wish we would just change the name of this to like connections or something. So I go to product reviews all the time. Don't tell anyone. And if if I hear this from someone else, I'll know that it was you who ratted me out. But. Everyone has their predilections for things, and I made a bingo card so that when I'm in product review or, you know, spec review meetings, I, like, cross off my bingo card with stuff that people say. I'll give you an example of something on my bingo card. What about ML flow? Always in there. We always talk about that. So if I check it off, I almost got close. I had three review meetings in one, one um, three review meetings, and one day I thought I would complete my bingo card just missed one one thing yeah FYI. okay so um for example um looks like i have this experiments experimentos donde estamos experiments and in experiments i have a bunch of stuff and Rochambeau is the data where we have it. But the thing is, I does this script have to go see what's in here? Like, is there a way to do an LS on, on these things? Oh, somebody... <laughs> All right, um, Azure Azure ML SDK SDK V2 data store data store. Uh, okay, yeah. So I did that, but is there a way to like do an LS on it? Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, jeez. This is a permissions thing. So 
So I think I think my biggest problem is that I'll have to update this ML table based upon what's in um, what's in my storage, not what's in my local file. Hmm, how do I do that in a smart way? Um, hmm. Okay, let's go back here. Azure blob storage list blobs. Am I just going to have to circumvent this thing? Yeah, I get this. I get this. Sure. Blobs. Jess. 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 Move. List. Okay. Here we go. Quick start. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, storage Explorer. By the way, if you don't use this thing, it's delightful. Fantastisch. Uh, here's the Hal dataset storage account. And I think. Blob containers. Blobbies. Los Blobbies. I think there's one called experiments. No, 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 no. Where is the experiments one? Let's go look. Uh, da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Overview. How data sets experiments. Perfect. So how data sets, there's this thing called experiments. Cool. So um uh, da, 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 da. I'm gonna open me some notepad here on the side. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, embarrassing. How do we, let's see. Um, I wonder, no, that's not what I want. I want experiments. Because that's where the Rochambeau stuff is, or RPS stuff I put there in as well. Okay, okay, so we got that. Uh, we added a container. We uploaded the block blobbies. Blobbies, download a block blob. We don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. I just want to list them for the love of all that is holy. Um, this is cool because we got to figure this out later because remember we're working on a feature where folks can um, upload their own pictures to make the model better. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run an auto ML job and just use that with some RAI in it. And anytime, like every week, I'll just refresh the JSONL data file. Like I said, most of machine learning is that data janitor stuff, and I'm literally in the throes of it right now. Ugh. Ugh. Where's my cookie? Okay. Upload a blob. Little, little. Download a blob. De -de 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 -de. Uh, Python SDK blob storage start Azure blob storage client for Python. De -de 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 Pip install Azure storage blob Azure identity. Don't mind if I do. We'll put it in the VEMV. Okay, yes, the AI, LS, peep install, peep install. Domo arigato gozaimasu. As we say in Oklahoma. Oh. Upgrade pip, you say. Don't mind if I do. Ooh, blow. One, two. Okay. 
So now that we've done that, um, I'm going to use a .env file. .env. And then, of course, no .env for you. .env. Goodbye. It's a secret data. Secret. Nobody can see it. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Now that we've done that. Uh, yeah. I wonder, uh, import OS, ooh, ooh, ED. Doo -doo. Beep, 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 beep. Let's go over here to our gen auto ML. And the reason why we're doing this is because I realize that if I can, if I'm, if I'm looking for data on this path, it's not going to match what's in, in storage. So I need to, you know. I do my thing here. Okay. Object model. There's a, an account, a container, and a blob. Yes, yes. A blob service client allows you to manipulate Azure blob. Container client allows class allows you to manipulate Azure source. Code examples. Authentic to uh, uh, authenticate. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let's try it. Copy. Okay. Def list list blobs. Look at that. How how do you do? How do you do? Beep, beep. Why am I typing like a buffoon? Look, oh my gosh. Good gravy. Good gravy. Hmm. There it is. <laughs> I'm sitting here trying to figure out how to do it. Um, and it was just like, just sit down, Seth. Sit down. Where is this coming from? No. There you go. Storage account. It's a string. We're going to F string this. Boop. What are we doing with our lives? Um, we're going to... Y'all can go to sleep for a second. Did I just close the file? I believe I did. Okay. Now let's uh, list blobs here. What did I just do? Okay. I don't know what I'm doing. List of blobs. That's what you think it is? Wrong. How data sets. How data sets. How data sets. Okay. But I think we also need to um, container client list blobs. Is there like a... All right, let's just see what happens. And you know what? We're gonna we're gonna step through this code because why not? Why not? There we go. F10 account URL how data sets default credential. Let's create a cred client. Nice, nice blob list. Oh, blob service client has no, um, uh, let's go to debug console and, uh, say container, container, client, dot, 
list containers. Yeah, I think I think I need to get the container. Uh, get container. Is there like a get blob? Get container client. Uh, and then we want our container client to be experiments. And then that's our that's our container client. Uh, so we'll do that. No, we got a container client though. Blob service client. Storage account host mix in. Storage in encryption mix in. Okay, okay. Example. Okay, stop. So container client. We've got the container client. Dot. Blob client. Let's blobs. Let's try that. Let's try it again. What is the harm? By the way, you're wondering, like, how does it know that it's me? I'll tell you in a second. Let's see if this works. What? That's what I did. This is what I did. Let's try it. I stop. Boop. Why didn't it like this? Um, let's try it again. Okay, so here's all the things here. Container client. Yeah, see, it's got it. It's got the credentials in there. Uh, looks like it's got the primary endpoint the host name. Yeah, so it's in there. It's in there. So let's do container client, see what we can dot into in the debug window. By the way, have you ever debugged Python? Um, isn't this glorious? What do we got here? What do we got here? Uh, list. Is that all we can do? I'm just going to force you, okay, to iterate. Oh. What? What's the problem? Que paso? X. Yeah, something's wrong. Oh, everything's everything is broken. I I've deadlocked it. Oh, oh. That was scary. That was very scary. Um, okay. So uh let's do this. Let's go over to account URL, default Azure credential. So let's let's just go, let's go super slow. Super slow. Yeah, 
So you see, we're literally doing the same thing. So we don't need this. Blob service client. Okay, that's what we that's what we did. Oh snap! It's almost time to go. I'll put my walk up music here to remind me of what I'm doing. Uh. So we have the container client. Maybe I need to get the container first. I mean. Yeah, because it's got the container client. So let's, that's what we don't have. So blob, blob service client dot get container, get blob, get container client. That container client is going to get the experiments because that's the container inside of the. So how data sets, the blob container is experiments and then and then, and then, oh, here's this. Uh, my debugging is placing console at log print. Yeah, I, I mean, I do that too. Uh, but wow, being able to look inside of a. So let's put this in here. Okay, let's try it now. Debug, debug, debug. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Default Azure credential. Blob service client. Get the container client. Container client has been acquired. List the blobs. Something's happening. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Maybe there's so many blobs. Yeah, what is going on here? This should be going faster. Stop. Let's just run it. Mm. Nada. By the way, for those watching, uh, coming up in a couple of weeks, coming up in a couple of weeks, we have January 13th, Azure ML and Talk Like a Pirate, R Day. R. R. We might do something between two, I don't know. Uh, we're also thinking of changing, changing day and time. Um, going once a week uh, for an hour instead of twice every other every other week for two hours just to get a little more consistency and because I'm not going to lie we certainly love hanging out my good friends I'll figure this out we'll get back to auto ML for images it's been a pleasure and delight being with every single one of you if you ever have any questions feel free to reach out to me to me, you can reach out to me on my email address. It's right there, Seth Juarez, Seth Juarez, Microsoft.com or at Seth Juarez. Privilege and a pleasure being with you if I don't see you and you're going off the holidays. Have a wonderful holidays. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully we will see you next time on the AI Show live. Take care and have a good rest of your day. Bye.